Hello friends, welcome to the first week of the MOOC course regarding the internal introduction to internal combustion engines. Now in this week we will see all the details related to the first uh, unit content. Now uh, let us move with the basic definitions. Now what is a heat engine? It is defined as any engine which converts thermal energy into mechanical work. Now here mechanical work means the shaft work which is called as the high grade energy. Now heat engine basically uses heat and converts that heat energy into useful mechanical work. So examples of heat engine are steam engine, diesel engine, gasoline or petrol engines now this is the basic definition of a heat engine so heat engine are classified into two other types so first is the internal combustion engine and external combustion engine now the internal combustion engine as the name specifies the combustion of the air fuel mixture happens in the combustion chamber whereas an external combustion engine is the engine where the combustion happens outside the cylinder or the combustion chamber so in this case you can clearly uh, distinguish between the two engines internal and external combustion engines now just uh, we will uh, see some practical examples of internal combustion engine and external combustion engine so internal combustion engine examples are ic engine uh, that is spark ignited engine compression ignited engines used for various applications generally known as petrol engines and diesel engines now what what is the example of an external combustion engine so the steam engines is a best example of external combustion engine where there is a boiler in which you convert water into steam now that steam is been expanded in a reciprocating piston cylinder arrangement which gets converted into a shaft work useful shaft work now clearly you can see the combustion process is not in the piston cylinder arrangement it is in the boiler the conversion of water into steam is in the boiler and that high pressure high temperature steam is utilized To reciprocate the piston in a piston cylinder arrangement which in turn converts this linear motion of the piston into the rotary motion of the crank shaft and can be used for different applications now just uh, we will look into more details for spark ignited engines so si engine is an engine which is an internal combustion engine where the combustion occurs by initiation of a spark so in such engine spark plug is used for the combustion process now the other category of internal combustion engines is compression ignition engines now such engines don't have a spark plug for the combustion process so as the name implies compression ignition it means that in such engines only air is compressed reversibly and adiabatically 
so at the end of compression the temperature of air is sufficiently high to ignite the fuel injected in the combustion chamber so please note combustion ignition clearly states that the combustion of fuel happens because of compression and that is because the temperature at the end of compression is sufficiently high to burn the fuel so such engines don't need any spark plug now again based on the working cycle internal combustion engines are sub classified into four stroke engines and two stroke engines now a two stroke engine is a engine which in which the compression the suction compression power and exhaust so in one revolution of camshaft you get one power stroke but whereas a four stroke engine two revolutions of crankshaft we get one power stroke now uh, if you see the basic processes in a internal combustion basically there are four processes the first process is the suction now in suction process air or air fuel mixture is sucked inside the cylinder wherein the piston travels from top dead center to the bottom dead center now the next process is the adiabatic compression now here the charge is compressed adiabatically end of compression the pressure and temperature increases and by the use by by using a spark plug the charge is ignited now what happens this ignited charge creates a very high rise in pressure and temperature in the cylinder now this creates the most useful stroke that is the power stroke in which the actual heat energy is getting converted into useful mechanical work and the final stroke is the exhaust stroke here the burnt out gases are removed from the engine now basically an internal combustion engine has a slider crank mechanism now the main components of slider crank mechanism as you can see in the figure engine components there is a piston there is a piston pin there is a connecting rod there is a crank and there is a crank shaft this all components make the slider crank mechanism now the function of piston it converts now the basic function is just to reciprocate but this reciprocation converts this linear motion of the piston into rotary motion of the crank so the most important component here is the piston now just you can uh, observe the diagram and you can see the different components of the engine the different components of the engine are spark plug inlet valve exhaust valve valve spring piston piston rings piston pin connecting rod crank crank shaft so these are some very important com components of a typical internal combustion engine now actually there are more than 800 components which fit in a single ic engine but we have just listed the main components adding to it is the combustion chamber engine block and the crank case 
so as a generalized term you can classify the engine into three sub parts first is the cylinder head second is the engine block third is the crankcase now just see one by one the cylinder head basically constitute of the walls inlet wall exhaust wall spark plug wall springs and cam shaft very important component now the next component is the engine block which is the main body of the engine here you have passage for the cooling water that is called also called as the water jacket next is the cylinder block in which you have a cylinder liner press fitted now this cylinder liner has piston and piston rings intact to it the next component is the crankcase so crankcase is the bottom most component of a ic engine now the function of the crankcase is it it acts as a space for the volume of oil so basically the oil of the entire engine is stored in the sump which is having the connections of oil pump oil filters etc now once again i list the components for your revision the components of an ic engines are block that is the engine block the most important component in most of the engines this component is manufactured by cast iron or aluminum alloy the manufacturing method is casting next is the cylinder now this cylinder block is the component where the piston reciprocates from top dead center to the bottom dead center next component is the cylinder head just now uh, just a few minutes before i gave you the important components which are fitted in the cylinder head combustion chamber now combustion chamber uh, has it is different for a petrol engine and a diesel engine the combustion chamber in a petrol engine is above the cylinder head uh, above the top dead center whereas the combustion chamber in a diesel engine is the piston bowed geometry this will be discussed in detail in unit 3 and 4 respectively moving forward the next component is the most important component the crankshaft the crankshaft is a shaft which actually produces the rotary motion or the heat energy by burning the charge is converted into mechanical work and this shaft acts as a main shaft where you get the brake power so shaft power is also called as the brake power in thermodynamic terms we also call it as the high grade energy crank shaft the manufacturing method is hot forging and the material is alloy steel next component is the connecting rod connecting rod is a component which connects piston with the crank and hence sliding motion of the piston is converted into rotary motion of the crank shaft by this component which is a connecting rod now the manufacturing method is hot forging the material is alloy steel next component is the piston rings 
Now these rings are fitted in the piston view which comes in contact with the cylinder liner. So in the piston cylinder arrangement the piston is not coming in direct contact with the cylinder liner but these piston rings are in direct contact with the cylinder liner. The, uh, the, the piston rings are manufactured by alloy steel or cast iron. And next component is the camshaft. Now the main function of the camshaft is to open and close the inlet and exhaust valves. So this camshaft is driven half the speed of crankshaft either by using the gearing arrangement or by using the chain drive. Most of the engines use chain drive. The manufacturing method is hot forging and the component, uh, sorry, the material is the alloy steel. Push rods. Now, this is another interesting component uh, in IC engines, but uh, these push rods are now limited to certain engines only. Generally, the engines which are big in big in capacity, more than uh, 100 kilowatts or 200 kilowatts, such engines use push rods. The function of the push rod is to it acts as a linkage, which is connected to the rocker arm. To, in, to open and close the valves. So it is an inter, intermediary component between the camshaft and the rocker arm and plays an important role to open and close the inlet and exhaust valves. The next component is the inlet system and exhaust system. So the inlet system is a system which acts as a passage for air fuel mixture in SI engine and air in case of CI engine. Whereas exhaust manifold acts as a passage which removes the exhaust burnt out gases from the cylinder. Now it is just a simple piping arrangement made up of cast iron and the manufacturing method is casting. Now we stop here with the first video of week number one. In the coming videos we will discuss in more details. Thank you friends. Thank you very much.